Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today we're going to be talking about fire sprinklers. We're introducing our new series, Fire Sprinklers Decoded. And in this particular episode, we're going to be focusing on standard coverage sprinklers. I'm going to give you a quick overview on the sprinkler pattern for standard coverage sprinklers. And we're going to do an introduction on operating area and the listing process, which is going to clarify uh, a couple of things. Uh, we're going to do a quick overview on the area of coverage per sprinkler per NFPA 13. That's National Fire Protection Association, Volume 13. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview also on standard coverage sprinkler spacing. We're going to do uh, one example for a light hazard room. We're going to space that out. Uh, we're going to do another example on ordinary hazard. And uh, we're going to do both of those in Revit. We're going to talk about the future topics in uh, fire protection and sprinklers. And if you haven't signed up for our free webinar on fire pump room layout, I strongly recommend you do so. Again, it's completely free. Uh, you can send me an email to info at bimitup.com and I'll add you to the webinar. It's going to be sometime in November, most likely, but try to sign up quick so that uh, we can coordinate. Okay, so let's first talk a little bit about the sprinkler discharge pattern. If you have a sprinkler all the way here at the top, the, the discharge pattern of that sprinkler is going to be a paraboloid or very close to a paraboloid. And then the area projected on the floor is going to be very close to a circle, right? So most people look at the sprinkler coverage as a circle with a certain radius. Uh, but that's not necessarily the best way to think about sprinkler coverage. Uh, sprinklers are listed, typically placed inside of a room. And then sometimes they're placed in the center of their sidewalls. They're placed on one of the walls. So what they're looking at is how much of the surrounding walls are wetted by the sprinkler discharge. And what this uh, leads us to is to think about a sprinkler coverage as a rectangle. Okay. And uh, the parameter that we're going to be talking about is called the area of the sprinkler or the operating area of the sprinkler or the sprinkler coverage area. So what's the sprinkler coverage area? Uh, let's say you have a room, right? And uh, you have some branch lines and then on those branch lines you have sprinklers. And then you have a wall here and another wall right here. Uh, the area per sprinkler which is uh, designated as an A sub S, is going to be the product of S times L, where S is the distance along the branch lines, which can be either B, which is this value, or two times A, which is the distance from the sprinkler to the wall multiplied by two. The largest of those two values is going to be S. And then similarly, the distance between branch lines is going to be either D or 2 times C, which is the distance from the sprinkler to the wall multiplied by 2. Typically, that distance between branch lines, you want to keep it as large as possible so that you minimize the number of branch lines and takeoffs from your main, which is going to keep your project cost efficient. Um, and then the distance along the branch lines, S, is going to be, always has to be smaller than your area of coverage per sprinkler divided by that distance L, which is the first one that you set with an even spacing. We're going to do a couple of examples on that. But for now, let's jump into NFPA 13, the National Fire Protection Association. Volume 13 deals with uh, fire sprinklers. And this is an extract from there. Uh, again, we're covering in this, uh, in this video, we're only covering standard coverage sprinklers. 
and it's only an introduction it's meant to be an introduction to keep it short so for light hazard occupancy you will have a maximum protection area of 225 square feet and a maximum spacing of 15 feet and this is going to be for non-combustible unobstructed ceilings which are the type of ceilings that we have been looking at in our Revit model and then similarly you have for ordinary hazard you have a protection area of 130 square feet notice that it does get reduced but the maximum spacing remains at 15 feet so let's understand this a little bit better for that we're going to do a couple of examples and for that let's jump into Revit and before we even start think about it it makes sense if you like this kind of content then make sure you subscribe to the channel you hit that bell so you get notifications you don't miss any of our videos okay so we're in our Revit model and we're going to protect this room here we're going to assume that this room is a light hazard room it can be either an office or a classroom and to protect this space we're going to use um, this sprinkler from uh, Viking is a standard covered sprinkler and uh, let's just drop it right here uh, we know that our ceiling is at eight feet of elevation so let's make sure we set our offset here to the correct value and uh, for now I'm gonna place it here actually it doesn't really matter what, like I, I eyeball it uh, to save a little time but typically you want to have it somewhere close to the center of a tile and the reason I placed it here is because I know that my maximum distance was 15 feet if you remember this table here 15 feet is my maximum distance so I know that half of 15 is seven and a half feet so each tile is two feet so I'm right there like at seven feet even a little bit less so I'm okay now um, how much how far away can I have this other sprinter well it's a maximum of 15 feet right so but what happens if I do 15 feet I fall right here in the in the middle of two tiles I cannot do that so the the correct value would be something like 14 feet or 12 feet in this case I'm gonna max it out of 14 feet and notice that this is actually perfect because I'm at seven feet from this wall I'm at 14 feet from each sprinkler and let's see if we get lucky in the other direction if I take my two sprinklers and I am taking them down let's say 14 feet I know 14 feet is my maximum to remain in the center of a tile actually I did get really lucky see I'm uh, seven feet from this wall and seven feet from this wall so this is a, a vanilla perfect uh, rabbit world uh, room right now there are a bunch of other considerations that we'll be talking about in the in subsequent videos uh, like vertical obstructions horizontal obstructions changes in ceiling heights uh, but we'll talk about that later so let's make sure we're in full compliance with NFPA 13 I'm gonna measure from this wall to the center of this sprinkler and then to this sprinkler and then to this wall and I'm doing tab select in case you don't know and then let's measure in the other direction from this wall to this sprinkler to this sprinkler to this wall and you're not doing this every time you you play sprinklers this is just for this example okay so if we go back to our little formula let's keep in mind that our area of coverage is gonna be s times l and then in in this direction what we have is 14 14 feet and to the wall we have six and something so six and something multiplied by two is going to be less than 14 so this is the value that we're going to use and then similarly in this direction 14 is going to be the maximum value so if you multiply 14 by 14 
you get 196, which is less than our maximum uh, protection area. So we are in full compliance. Now let's go to our ordinary hazard example. Now we're assuming that this room here is ordinary hazard. So it can be um, maybe a laboratory, it can be a mechanical room. Um, so let's uh, start the same way we did with the other one. So let's see if we can get away with 14 feet, right? Can we be 14 feet away from each other? Yes, we can because the maximum spacing is still 15 feet. So we're okay so far. Now let's see if we can get away with the same thing we did for light hazard. If I were to copy this, what was it, 14 feet down? Then I am complying with the maximum spacing, right? Because from here to here is 14, from here to here is 14, from here to here is 14. But then what happens is that we're not complying with our area of coverage per sprinter. Why? But then remember, we had 14 times 14, and that's 196 square feet. But our maximum protection area for ordinary hazard is 130 square feet. So we definitely will have to add a, another row of sprinters. And keep in mind that I'm keeping my maximum distance between sprinters so that I have less branch lines coming out of my main which is gonna keep my project more cost effective because I have fewer branches and I have fewer takeoffs. So how do we solve this? Well, very, very easy. Uh, obviously, this layout has to be coordinated with HVAC diffusers, lights, uh, smoke detectors, or, or any other ceiling devices that you have to take into account. So in this case, I'm just gonna take this, uh, let's say four feet up and uh, it gives me a pretty balanced um, layout. I'll say, let's say six feet. Six feet, by the way, is the minimum distance between sprinters to prevent pre-wetting. Uh, now this doesn't look too balanced, so I'm gonna take this guys here, and I'm gonna bring them up, let's say four feet, and that looks pretty good. And now let's check if we're in full compliance. Remember that distance S is gonna be our operating area divided by L. So let's do that right now. So my distance between branch lines is 14 feet. So my distance along the branch line is gonna have to be 130 square feet, which is the maximum that I can use for ordinary hazard, divided by 14 feet. And now let's check if we're in full compliance. Remember that distance S is gonna be our operating area divided by L. So let's do that right now. So my distance between branch lines is 14 feet. So my distance along the branch line is gonna have to be 130 square feet, which is the maximum that I can use for ordinary hazard divided by 14 feet and that's 9.286 hmm but we have to be careful here because remember our distance has to be less than that area divided by our previous distance so so when we divide our allowed operating area per sprinter which is 130 square feet we divide it by the distance in this direction we get 9.286 and uh, that's our maximum distance in the other direction. But it turns out that now we have two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. We have 10. So that exceeds our maximum area. So even though we have a maximum spacing of 15 feet, we need to comply with both the maximum spacing and the protection area per sprinter. And we're not, because we are exceeding, if we're, we're spacing these two guys so much that we are reducing the allowable distance that they can be 
far apart along the branch line. So we would have to take these two guys here and bring them down, let's say two feet. And now we are in compliance. Why? Because, so I have placed all the important dimensions here because I want us to really dissect this to see if we do comply or not with NFPA 13 with this layout. So let's go back to our original formula, right? And in our case, we have, remember it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is commutative, so it doesn't really matter if it's the distance along or between branch lines. The important thing is that is distance in one direction and distance in the other direction, okay? So we had that the maximum distance in one direction was 14 feet, which is this one here, right? And then we determined that if we wanted to comply with 130 square feet maximum per NFPA 13, if we divide that by 14, our maximum distance in the other direction had to be 9.3 feet. So here, we're cutting it pretty close, uh, but still, if we multiply this number by two, we get about 9.2 is very very close to 9.3 feet but we're still in compliance now if you go all the way down this other sprinkler is in the same situation this is 14 feet and this is also if you multiply this times 2 is less than 9.3 feet but in this sprinklers here see this sprinkler here for example is 14 feet in this direction and it is 10 feet in this direction. So if you were to multiply 14 times 10, you would get 140 and you would not be complying with the maximum 130 square feet. So for that, we would have to add another row of sprinklers here. So this would be one layout that is in full compliance. And let's say you wanted to do something like this. What would happen is that even though the distance between these two sprinklers is 14 feet, and each one of the distances between sprinklers is eight feet, which is less than what we agreed on, that was 9.3 feet. What kills you is that the distance from this sprinkler to this wall is about six feet. And if you multiply six feet by two, it's 12. And 12 by 14 is 168 square feet, which is larger than our maximum 130 square feet. So it is not complicated but you have to be very careful on not exceeding your maximum distances and maximum square feet. And once again, this is a very brief introduction to sprinkler spacing. There are many other factors to consider. Um, slope ceilings is one of them, angled walls, small room exception, minimum distance between sprinklers, different type of construction, maximum distance below ceilings, breaking ceiling elevations, horizontal and vertical obstructions, concealed spaces, attics, storage, and much more. So let me know in the comments which topic you're most interested in and I'll create that video. But for now, uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.